So, uh, a while back, my buddy Adam Buskirk and I made a deal. A drug deal. No, just a normal deal. We made a deal. I wonder if that's over or not. We made a deal. Uh, basically a you do this and I'll do that type deal over different media. He wanted me to watch uh, CW's The Flash, which there are two seasons up on Netflix. And I wanted him to play The Legend of Dragoon. So we made that deal. And I finally finished watching all of The Flash on Netflix. And I figured I'd talk about it. Let me be perfectly honest. Um, I'm not like a fanboy of DC or Marvel. When it comes down to my preferences, anything that Marvel does that is live action, I think is pretty good. I think their animated stuff sucks. Anything that DC does that is animated, I think is awesome. I think their live action stuff sucks. So it's kind of flipped with me. That's not to say The Flash was bad. I thought it was actually remarkably good. Um, I'm going to talk about both seasons. I'm not going to try to do any spoiler stuff. Just talk about what I enjoyed about the show. But um, if I had to be perfectly honest, I think season one was better than season two. Because season two introduces a lot of time travel and multiverse stuff. And it kind of fucks up the narrative in my opinion. But, um, I finally watched it and I'm going to talk about it. So Adam, you best get playing Legend Dragoon, boy. You better get playing. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> I'm weird. Anywho, The Flash. A.K.A. the guy from the Justice League. The dude in the red suit runs really fast. I was never a really big fan of The Flash. I don't find him to be a particularly interesting superhero. I'm much more of a fan of people like Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, or hell, even Soups and Bats. But when it comes down to it, I thought that this portrayal of The Flash was pretty decent. Pretty grounded. Um, if I had to pick out my favorite thing about The Flash television show, it would probably be character. It's really difficult these days for actors to break away from the fact that they are a person that is recognizable. For instance, Robert Downey Jr. It's very difficult for them to break away from being Robert Downey Jr. and break into being Tony Stark. It's very difficult sometimes for actors to portray the character that they are to portray. That's why I have trouble watching anything with Johnny Depp in it now, because I don't see a character. I see Johnny Depp. I don't see Captain Jack Sparrow. I don't see Sweeney Todd. I see Johnny Depp. But the characters in The Flash are so fucking good, in my opinion, at portraying who they're supposed to be, that I honestly sometimes forgot who they were supposed to be. What I mean is... <laughs> uh, the character that plays Joe, a.k.a. Barry Allen's father, Fouster father, I believe he's an actor who's also on one of the Law & Order TV shows. But I never really thought of him as being that character. And even now, I don't think of him as being that character. I think of him as being Joe. The down-on-his-luck, single father of, you know, his daughter Iris and his adopted son, Barry Allen. I think of him as being a strong, uh, but caring... Uh, up, up, uplifting character. I, I think of him as being all these different things that I would associate with being a good father, not knowing because I didn't have one, but we're not going to get into my own problems that make me into a supervillain one day. But I think of him as Joe. I think of him as this character. The actor that portrays Barry Allen. I think of him as Barry Allen, the Flash. The actors that portray his supporting cast, for instance, Cisco and Caitlin. I, I didn't know who these act, th this actor and actress were before, but now I really do portray them as Cisco and Caitlin. The character that plays uh, uh, Dr. Wells, who is uh, the character in the wheelchair for the first season. When you watch, you'll know who I'm talking about. When I when I think of his character, I think of him as you know very intelligent, very calculated. I think of him as the mentor to Barry Allen, The Flash. I think of him as a very deep and interesting character. This show is incredibly fucking good at character, and that's one of the reasons I kept watching it. 
One of the things that I've always enjoyed about television, movies, or even video games is an actor's ability to portray a character. And so I really did enjoy these different characters that are present in this show. I think that some of the villains are a wet blanket. There are villains that do get better. There are characters that are bad that do get more fleshed out and more intriguing. At the very beginning of the show, it's kind of Monster of the Week. If any of you have ever tried watching a TV show about superheroes or anything like that, uh, for instance, to compare this to another show, uh, Supernatural, which I basically marathoned when I was living with someone over in Georgia. Uh, it feels kind of like that Monster of the Week bullshit in the beginning, but eventually it hooks its narrative and it gets its main villain. You'll find out. I'm not going to spoil it. It gets its main villain and it goes with it. And I think that it just really does very good at fleshing out some of these characters. Most notably in season, I think it was in season two where it started, or it could have been late season one. There is a moment where it fleshes out one particular villain. I'm not going to spoil them, I'm just going to describe them. They flesh out this villain, and you find out this villain has a sister who's also a villain, and they just they work together, and they just seem like real assholes. But there's another moment where these two villains, their father shows up, who is played by an actor I can't separate from being the actor, and I was giddy every time I saw him because I love the actor. You'll know who I'm talking about when you watch it, if you watch it. Anywho... The portrayal of their father and how much darker and more violent and more uncaring he is fleshed them both out because one of them was trying to work with the Flash to save the other one and one of them was working with the father to try to keep the other one safe. It's very complicated. I'm trying not to spoil. But it fleshed out this villain character. And it was so cool because I think near the end of the episode, basically the Flash says to him, I see good in you. You don't like it, but I see good in you. And it was just really interesting to see this characterization. Number of times when I've watched television or movies or even superhero stuff, it's very cut and dry. Good, bad, that's all there ever is. But seeing a villain who has so much care and compassion for his sibling is very cool. Oh shit, I just did a pun because his character, shit, fuck down. Adam will get that. Adam will laugh at that. All of you who haven't watched it are not going to understand when I say that this was very cool about the character who's very cold. Fuck. Anywho, I liked the character in this show so much. I liked seeing the portrayal of the different interactions between these characters. For instance, there's this very fucked up love situation going on between the Flash and his love interest. And it was really interesting seeing this. A lot of people complain about this soap opera drama that's in television, but the fact of the matter is, we as human beings love, love, soap opera drama. That's why The Walking Dead is as popular as it is. Because at the, at, the, at the end of the day, The Walking Dead is two things. It's soap opera drama characters and it's zombies. That's all it is. That's all it has. So when you're not having people eaten alive or shooting zombies, you've got to have this character development. And that's why I like the show too. But with The Flash, it was just so interesting seeing these different people come together and be fleshed out and act. Actually act. I'm so sick and tired of seeing actors turn into models that look pretty and say lines. It's so goddamn annoying. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You see these people on TV, you see these people in movies, and you ask yourself, why the fuck are you here? You have no acting skill whatsoever. Oh, you're pretty? Well, fuck you. I'm so sick and tired of seeing that shit. I don't care how pretty you are. I want to see someone who can act. I want to see someone who can bring a character to life. Bring a character to fruition. That's, that's one thing I like about voice talent. You, you, you know, when, when you watch like an animated feature, you watch like, watch the old Batman and Superman cartoons. That voice acting was fantastic. Sometimes cringy, but fantastic. But I really like seeing characters brought to life by good actors actors. And I think this show has pretty damn good actors. Now if I'm done sucking that dick, let's move on to some other stuff to talk about. Alright, so aside from the acting from the character, there's other things that are going on with the Flash television show. Obviously it's going to follow the lore and the history and the characterization of the Flash. Now again, I wasn't a big fan of the Flash, but I've seen the animated features. I love DC's animated movies. And one of them I saw, I don't remember the entire name, but it was a relatively new DC movie based on The Flash. I think it had the name Flashpoint something, but I can't remember. But the movie involved 
Flash breaking the time barrier thing, coming back, and everything being different. Batman was no longer Batman. Batman was the elder Wayne who lost his son and his wife in that incident years ago and became a vicious, brutal, gun-toting Batman, which was badass. It had all these different things happening, and it all revolved around the fact that the Flash went back in time and saved his mother from being killed. Uh, the Flash television show revolves around a similar concept. Barry Allen, Barry Allen had his mother killed years ago. His, his father basically framed for her murder, but he remembers seeing streaks of lightning surrounding his mother, one red, one yellow. And if you don't know, the yellow streaks belong to the good Flash, and the red streaks belong to an entity who's known as the Yellow Man, or, if you're a comic book fan, the Reverse Flash. Yes, the Reverse Flash is in Season 1. That's not a spoiler. You guys will know. Anywho, the, the story revolves around Barry Allen coming to terms with the death of his mother and eventually gaining powers as an adult. What happens is there is this particle accelerator the Dr. Wells created, and it explodes. It fucking blows up and sends dark matter energy radiating throughout Central City. It hits... Uh, Barry Allen and a bunch of other people, but it also, I think, if I, I haven't watched the first episode in a while, this was back before my hiatus, I think when the, the accelerator exploded and hit him with the energy, he also got struck by lightning. He just had a fucking bad day. But he got struck by lightning and was in a coma for some time. And he basically gained his powers through this this incident. And the, the, the rest of season one is him coming to terms with his powers and trying to figure out who the man in yellow is, because he does run into the man in yellow throughout the the, the first season. And um, while I don't know a lot about Flash or his villains, I found that this this character growth and this this power, you know, training and all this was very interesting. In the beginning, seeing him come to terms with his abilities and stuff like that was interesting because there's a lot of times when people just get superpowers and it's like, oh, I can shoot lightning out of my hands now. You would think that would have negative repercussions if you didn't know how to control it. Uh, for instance, uh, infamous second son, when he first got his powers, he couldn't control it. It was really cool. It was really neat. But I liked seeing some things that I was familiar with after watching that film, of course, seeing some things that I'm familiar with and uh, seeing how things turned out in this television show. Not to spoil, not to do anything too fucked up, but at the end of season two, Barry actually does go back in time. He had gone back in time previously and he ch decided not to change the past. At the end of season two, he does go in back in time and change the past. So I have no idea what's going on in season three. Uh, it's not on Netflix yet. I will try to watch it when it is on Netflix because I told Adam I would fucking watch it. But uh, I, I sincerely hope that somewhere in season three there's a badass Batman toting guns. I really do. But the the story of the Flash I think is 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 well told. I think that they keep a lot of the comic book stuff intact. I think they keep a lot of the DC animated universe stuff intact. And the story is really good. Uh, seeing Flash slowly become the superhero that he is meant to be, seeing him come to terms with his humanity as well as his ability to be a superhuman, metahuman thing, his, his ability to... Uh, to come to terms with the yellow, the man in yellow, when he when he learns who the man in yellow is, and, and things get really super intense and everything, seeing all of this stuff was just great because I had been able to enjoy the characterization up until that point. Uh, for instance, you know, you you had these these different shows that never flesh out the characters, and when you get to the big shit, you don't care because you're not invested. That's why I didn't care about Suicide Squad. I wasn't invested in the characters. I need to bitch about Suicide Squad at some point talked about the characters, I've talked about the story. The the last thing that I want to go over basically is just the action and the budget. I can tell that the season one of The Flash had a pretty low budget. There were some effects that looked a little bit laughable. Not bad, not bad, but gamey. Um, one of the most uh, interesting things was the fact that season two had a much bigger budget. Uh, not to spoil, I don't want to spoil, if you're a comic book fan or a fan of the show or, or the, the not the show not this show but old Flash stuff, if you're a fan of the Flash, you're going to know what I'm talking about when I describe this. There is a character, a very animalistic character in season one who looks goofy as shit. The graphics on this dude do not look very good. In season two, he shows up again and he looks much more like I would consider him to need to look. He looks like a fucking giant gorilla instead of a giant animated gorilla. It's clear that season two had a much better budget. But season one doesn't have bad 
special effects by any means, but season two clearly had better special effects. And some of these things that they do with the special effects, I think, are pretty interesting. Season two did have one moment where I was like, that's clearly super cartoony graphics right there, where the Flash basically caught another human being in midair and then took her somewhere safe. But I could tell that, number one, I can always tell that he's CG, but she looked super CG. But, um... The action was pretty good. There are some things that I find goofy because I'm not necessarily a Flash fan. Like when he spins his arms super fast in order to create vortexes or he basically runs in a circle really fucking hard to make a vortex. I find these to be a little goofy because, again, I'm not a big fan of the Flash. Sorry, I can't help it. But uh, the action's pretty good. One of the things that I think they didn't flesh out a lot on is the fact that he's the Flash. He can punch you super fucking fast. Like, not just the fact that he can run real far back and run real far forward and, like, do a supersonic punch, but the fact that he can just run circles around you and punch you lightning fucking fast. I want to see more of that shit. I want to see the Flash run circles around somebody and beat them to a fucking pulp. I didn't see nearly enough of that. I did see quite a bit of it when he was attacking individuals that were really, really bad, like the man in yellow or a villain that's in the second season, which I won't spoil at all. I won't even talk about him. But I, I thought they should do more super fast punching. I want more punching. I like punching. I watched Batman and Superman when I was little. I want more punching. You know, Iron Man does his blasts and stuff, but never punches, okay? Martian Manhunter hardly punches, but Superman and Batman are always punching the fuck out of somebody. You can tell I really liked those cartoons. When I was little, those cartoons were my fucking world. It's why I hate that I didn't enjoy Batman versus Superman or any of the live action stuff. I can't get into it. I don't like it. I'm sorry. But the Flash had quite a bit of action. I think that the special effects are decent. I think that a lot of the different moments that are supposed to hit really hard do hit really hard. For instance, uh, don't want to spoil too much. The end of season one, like if you don't watch this on Netflix and if you watch this on TV, it'd be such a huge cock tease. The end of season one has a pretty dramatic moment. The last moments of the episode are dramatic as fuck. And I thought that was really good, again, because I was invested in the characters. If I didn't care about Joe or Iris, if I didn't care about Iris' boyfriend, which something happens, I'm not going to spoil, I wouldn't have cared so much at the end when the things that happened happened and were damn fucking good. No lie, no bullshit. But I think that when it wants to build up tension and drama, it does. There are some moments where it feels like a complete cop-out. There was one moment where Flash, basically, at the end of the episode, he got his ass fucking kicked. And he's like, I can't feel my legs. He's a superhero. He regenerates. He has superhuman healing. By the next episode, he was walking on crutches, and they're like, oh, this would have paralyzed a normal person for the rest of their life. You fucking bastards, don't tease me. There were moments like that. There is a moment where he completely loses his powers, and I thought, oh, he'll just get them back. And they did trick me with the way he got them back. I was like, fuck, you killed him. But no, they didn't. I think that the Flash TV show is actually pretty good. I would not have watched it had Adam not asked me to watch it and us made our little deal where he plays Legend of Dragoon. But I'm glad I watched it. I thought it was pretty entertaining. I thought it was pretty interesting. And it has quite a few crossovers with the Arrow TV series, which I'm honestly thinking I'm going to start up the Arrow now on Netflix as well. But uh, honestly, if you're looking for some good TV, if you've got Netflix, I recommend checking out The Flash. I think that it's actually pretty neat. And after watching The Flash TV show... <sighs> I'm honestly a little bit sad that that actor who portrays Barry Allen in the TV show isn't going to be the actor portray, per, portraying Barry Allen in the Justice League movie. It's a little bit disheartening. It's much like when I liked that Edward Norton one time played the Hulk and then he wasn't in the, uh, the Avengers movies. But I will say, the guy that does play the, Aven the, play the Hulk in the Avengers, best Bruce Banner I've ever fucking seen in my life. He's an amazing fucking actor. But yeah, I watched The Flash, I actually enjoyed it, and I told Adam, he was like, hey, what'd you think about it? I'll make a video, and I will, that's not even remotely what Adam sounds like, hey, what'd you think about it? <laughs> what did you think about it, Brett? I told him I'd make a video, and I did make a video, and depending on how long it takes to upload, you'll all be able to watch it. Again, I recommend checking out The Flash, if you haven't seen it. thought it was a pretty damn good show. I love the characters more than anything. They're great. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you check out The Flash. And Adam, get to playing Legend of Dragon Goon, boy. Disc 3 is waiting. Get to playing. Thanks for watching, guys. Do take care.